Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm continuing my series of fashion inspired looks. You guys said you wanted to see more after my Iris Van Herpen video. If you haven't watched that one, then click right up here. And as you probably know, the Met Gala just happened. And so I'm going to be doing a couple looks, maybe more than just a couple, we'll see, inspired by outfits from the Met Gala pink carpet. If you don't know already, the theme for this year's Met Gala was camp, and so everyone wore really exaggerated, really fun outfits. It was amazing. So I decided to do a few looks inspired by my favorite outfits. And I'm gonna be starting off with Haley Steinfeld's outfit and makeup. I'm gonna be doing the makeup that she wore, but then incorporating her dress into the actual makeup, and you'll see what I mean. So yeah, that's it. I've already done my foundation and concealer as you can tell I've powdered my face but that's it I haven't done anything else and I'm just gonna get to it but before I begin please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already so to prep my skin I use the Smashbox primerizer in my dry areas and the milk makeup blur stick in my t-zone and then I use the Smashbox studio skin foundation because it has a matte finish and I'm gonna be using all powders on my face today. So I didn't want any dewiness so that the powders wouldn't stick to the foundation when I applied them. For my concealers, I used a mixture of like two or three different concealers, so I'm not even gonna get into that. So as I said, I'm going to be recreating the makeup that Haley wore on the pink carpet. And the makeup was done by a New York makeup artist called Carolina Gonzalez. And she posted on Instagram the list of products that she used on Haley, and I own a total of zero of them. So I'm gonna be grabbing products from my stash that I think are similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with very light contouring. Carolina used the Kevin O'Quan Sculpting Powder in Medium. I'm just gonna use my trusty Catrice eyeshadow. It is a very grayish toned brown and I'm gonna do very very light contouring with this. She seems like she contoured her nose mainly and it seems like a bit under the lips so I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. I like to concentrate my contour on the tip of my nose because the tip is a little bit wider than the bridge up here. So to make it seem narrower, I just like to contour a little bit. And I'm using a little eyeshadow brush for this, but I am gonna bring it all the way up to the eyebrow area. Then once that's done, I'm just gonna contour under my bottom lip to make it seem a little bit fuller, a little bit poutier. Then I'm also gonna take some around my forehead. I'm also gonna contour a little bit under my chin. She has a much more square face than I do, so I'm just going to try to give the illusion that my face is a little bit shorter and I'm not gonna contour the sides so that it looks wider. Carolina used the Lime Crime Birthday Cake Palette, which is weird because I googled it and the eyeshadow in the palette seems to be mint colored, but on Haley it looks super lime green, so I don't know what's going on there, but today I'm gonna to be using the Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette. We all know it, we all love it. I'm gonna be using the Take a Hint color. I might mix it a little bit with the Creep It Real, we'll see. But first, I'm just gonna take, take a hint and apply it all over my lids. This is just like a one eyeshadow color all over type of look. It's really easy, really simple. She does seem like she has a highlight in the inner corner and it kind of seems like she has a little bit of a yellow as a transition shade. It's not listed in the product list and I looked at the palette that she used and there's no yellow. There's like a kind of medium skin tone transition shade. So I don't know if she used that and it just reads as yellow on Haley. I think I am gonna take a little bit of Creep It Real and I'm gonna go over everything. This adds a little bit of mint to it. Whoa, these eyeshadows are insanely pigmented. I'm gonna layer a little bit more of Take a Hint on top because I don't want Creep It Real to overpower the look. I really want them to blend together and make this kind of bright neon minty green. And the take a hint around the edges actually does look a little bit yellow, even though it's not. But just compared to where I mixed the Creep It Real, it kind of looks a little bit more yellow. So I'm just adding a little bit more that take a hint to the edges. I think I'm also going to add a tiny bit of Creep It Real to the inner corner. And then I'm just going to layer a highlighter on top of that later. I might add a little bit. I'm going to go in with the BH Cosmetics 
Take Me Back to Brazil palette, and I'm going to take this little, oh, I just put my thumb in the black, um, and I'm going to take this pale, pale yellow, and I'm just going to take that around the edges a little bit, and up towards the brow bone. Oh, I didn't even do my eyebrows. I always do eyebrows before I do my eyes, but that's fine. I'll do that next. There, that's pretty much it. The eyeshadow that she used seems to be a lot paler, uh, but this is what I got, and the theme is camp, so I'm gonna exaggerate, I don't care. Next up, for the inner corner highlight, I'm gonna use the Black Moon Cosmetics Glow Worm Moonlighter. It is a green colored, it's got a green shift to it, and I think this will help pale down the eyeshadow as well. So I'm just going to take that on a little rounded pencil brush and then I'm going to apply that to the inner corners and I'm really going to pack that on. Yeah, that definitely seems much more like the eyeshadow she used. So I might layer this onto my lid as well just to lighten it up a little bit but still keep that green glow. And I'll do under my eyes too. I'm gonna take that other brush that I used before and just use it to help pack it on. You can tell how much that brightens up the eyeshadow. Next up, I'm gonna do eyebrows because I have to admit, I totally forgot to do them first. I got overexcited and went ahead and did my eyes. So as you might be able to tell, I'm growing back my little eyebrows and so I've got the beginning of a little tail here, so I need to help it out a little bit. It's very sparse. So I'm gonna go in with the NYX Colored Felt Tip Liner to try to draw in little hair-like strokes. I actually haven't tried this yet for my eyebrows, so this is gonna be a first. Fingers crossed it works. And she went for a very full, very fluffy brow, so I'm just going to try to mimic that and draw in little hair-like strokes. Her brows kind of curve all the way down. They're really, really fluffy, really, really long. Whoa, what did I just do? Fine, everything can be fixed. And I'm also going to do a couple right at the front. Now I still need to go with some brow gel to really fluff up my eyebrow hairs, but I wanted to do this first. So that's kind of the shape that I'm aiming for. And I'm gonna try out the Benefit Gimme Brow because I've never used it. I'm gonna clean the excess off the brush because I don't want to overload the brow hairs. This color is nice. It seems to have good kind of staying power. So I've got a huge gap right there. So I'm gonna have to fix that up real quick. All right, so I think that's it for brows. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. Some brow hairs aren't sticking up, so I think I'm actually gonna go in with the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. This is a colorless brow gel, but it really has a lot of staying power. So I'm just gonna use that to really keep the brows in place because I don't want them to budge and I want them to stick straight up. Okay, so I feel like that helps. Not bad, not bad. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same on the other brow. I feel really weird with these brows. But anyway, moving on. Next step is going to be cheeks. And the blush she wore was the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in the color Dollface. It reads as a very bubblegummy light pink blush and I run away from that type of blush so I don't actually own any like that. So instead I'm gonna use an eyeshadow and I'll probably mix some blush in as well to kind of help with the color. But to start off, I'm gonna go back in with a Creepy Cute palette and I'm gonna use the color Strawberry Milk. This one isn't very bubblegummy pink, but it's a very light pink and I think it'll really give the effect. Mm, it's actually reading a little bit kind of peach. I don't really have any bubblegum pink blushes that are this light. I'm gonna try going in with the Lunatic Cosmetics Contra Palette Volume 1. And I'm gonna try this top shade right there. I think that might be a better match. And I'm concentrating on the apples of my cheeks and bringing it down. I'm just concentrating it on this area here. It's not quite bubblegummy enough. The only blue toned blushes that I have are much darker. 
Wait, I gotta find something that works. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the City Color B Matte Blush. I'm gonna go with this middle one right here. I know it looks purple, but it's just going to kind of counteract. Ooh, that's really dark. It's gonna counteract the peachiness in the other blushes that I used. Still not quite right. Hold on. Gonna try this NYX Ombre Blush in the color Code Breaker. It's very bright, as you can see. But I'm gonna see if that helps to give that kind of bubble gummy look. Not really. I don't know. Now I'm just like really, really, really pink. But she was very pink too, so it's fine. That's probably as much blush as I can put on my cheeks without going completely crazy. I mean, this is kind of crazy, but yeah, I just don't have the right color for her blush. So for her highlighter, she used the Stila Heaven's Hue Highlighter in the color Transcendence. And from the pictures I saw, it's a very pinky, purpley highlighter. So I'm gonna mix two highlighters. I'm gonna go in first with the Smashbox and Hood Witch Collaboration Highlighter in the color Optimistic. And it is a gorgeous pink toned highlighter, but it's not purpley enough. And so to add in the purple, I'm gonna go with a tiny bit of the Milk Makeup Holographic Highlighting Powder and it's very, very purple, but mixing the two, I think I can get the right tone. And I wanna be pretty light-handed with this, so I'm gonna use a really loose, fluffy brush. I'm gonna go in first with the Smashbox one, and I'm just applying it to high points of my cheeks, and you can see it reads very pinky. So I'm gonna go in with a touch of the Milk one, just over top, and I think that achieves the right color. And I'm also gonna add this combination to the tip of my nose. I'm gonna use my finger for this. I'm also gonna add it to the bridge of my nose, cause let's face it, I am me. I'm actually also going to use whatever blush is left on my brush and just apply it to my chin a little bit. She seemed quite rosy. I'll add a little bit to my nose, cause why not? And I'm going very light-handed with the highlighter. It's just a slight touch. Highlighters are never too intense on red carpets. This is even pushing it, I think. And I might add a little bit just of the Hood Witch one just to my chin, just to give a nice little healthy glow. And it adds a little bit of pink to the chin too. For the freckles, she used the Kevin O'Quan Precision Brow Pencil in Brunette. I'm gonna be using the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the color Endless Cacao. It's a pretty neutral, medium brown. And they're very exaggerated and non-realistic. They're kind of what you would do on a child if you were dressing them up in a costume. You just put the pencil and twist, and it makes a little dot. And so it's just that pretty much all over. This brings me back to when I was a kid in Brazil. We have this thing called Festa Junina where you dress up and usually the girls get freckles. So this brings me back. And she really did them all over the cheeks and the nose. If you have any pimples, this is a great way to cover them up. <laughs> I'm just gonna give this a little sharpening. So you just have to put the pencil on the skin and twist. You don't have to really apply any pressure. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the lips. And the lipstick I'm gonna be using is the NYX Cosmetics Pin Up Pout in the color Darling. It's a very bubblegummy pink, very close to the blush that I've got going on. But first, I'm gonna line my lips. And to line my lips, I'm going in with the NYX Slide On Glide On lip pencil in the color Alluring. So she did overline her lips quite a bit, but she kept the shape pretty natural and it does seem like she has a bit of a darker outline. So I'm just gonna try to mimic her lip shape and her lip shape is very rounded too, with not much of a cupid's bow. Oh my God, I got Tatiana stuck in my head and I don't know what to do about it. Now that I think I've got the right shape, I'm gonna go in with my lipstick and just fill everything in. And this lip liner is quite darker than the lipstick color. So I'm gonna take the lipstick all the way to the edge of the lip liner. I look crazy. I think this lipstick is a little too bright. It's just like a touch. I'm gonna blot it first and see. I think that helps it a little bit. I'm gonna take a little lip brush and just 
blend it together with the lip liner along the edges and just make sure that it's spread out evenly because this formula, I've actually never used this NYX lipstick before, but the formula is a lot creamier than I thought it would be. I thought it would be like really matte and it's very, very creamy. I think that's a little bit better, but I still look kind of crazy with this lip shape. I'm going to add a bit of an arch to the cupid's bow just because I think it's more flattering for my lip shape. But remember, this is camp, this is very exaggerated, and that's what I definitely feel these lips are. I'm so not used to seeing me with pink lips. I'm just like, oh, okay. So now that that's done, I'm actually going to leave the eyes for last, and as I said, I'm going to incorporate her dress into the makeup look. And what do I mean by that? Well, she wore a very iconic Victor and Rolf dress, and on the dress it says, no photos please. So what I wanna do is I wanna take that very graphic text and put it on the face over the makeup. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and write on my face. <laughs> so because I wanted all the letters to be the same, I know that I usually freehand everything, and I am going to freehand, but I cut out sort of like a little stencil for me so that I could map out the size of each letter. So each letter is going to be this big. I might actually cut it down a little bit. This seems a little too big. But this way I can map out the height and the width of each letter. And I'm going to do that all over my face. The letters are literally just going to go on my face as if they've just been copied and pasted onto my face. So I've trimmed it down a little bit. And I'm going to use a light skin colored pencil to help map out the letters. This is the NYX Wonder Pencil. And I took the design into Photoshop and I mirrored it. So I'm going to be following that for my letters so that I don't do them the wrong way around. So the first one is going to be the N line there, the line there. So that's going to be my N. Then I just connect that end with that end. And then all the letters are really close together. So the O, I'm going to trace here, trace here, and I'm just not tracing the corners so that I can curve them. It's a big old no. The next row should go right over my eyes, but I don't know if I want to do that. I should have done the no lower actually because each row is right under the next row. So I want the please to be here like over the mouth. So if we do one, two, three. Yeah, the no has to go right over my eyebrows. Uh oh. So see, that's why I use this pencil because I can just do that and it blends in with my skin pretty much. See, it's an easy cleanup. So I think I'm gonna start actually mapping out the bottom row where I want the please to be and go from there because I want it to go right below my nose. It's gonna need to start all the way over here. So the P, I'm gonna trace the top, this, and trace that, and that'll be a P. I'll go L, E, A, S, E. I'm not gonna go over my lipstick with this. I just need to know the rough outline of the A. And next up is the S. Then another E all the way over here. Okay, now that I've got the bottom most row, I'm gonna go ahead and do the second row. And the words aren't perfectly aligned on the side on the dress. Like the P of the photo starts above the L of the please and continues past the please. And then the no starts even closer. But I think I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm not gonna take it that far in. I'm gonna start over here. Almost on my eyes. This is gonna be tricky to do. I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, this O on my nose is gonna be hell. But it's going to be off center. It's not going to be exactly on my nose, but it's going to start here and end here. And then the T in the center of it, just kind of like here. Then another O. 
And the S is barely gonna fit on my face. It's in my hairline. Now I can do the N-O. Actually kind of loving this look already. You can already get a sense of what it's going to look like. It's very graphic. It's very bold. I'm really into that. That is the letters mapped out and that's going to save me time. Obviously this is going to take a long time trying to get the lines super super straight and all kind of the same width, but this is going to help out a lot. I'm going to try to do the letters the way they are on the dress. They have a kind of double outline to them, but I don't know if it's gonna make them too thick. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna be using the Wolf Black Face Paint as always. I think my brush is a little too thick to do this outline. I don't know, I could be wrong. I'm gonna try up here first because it's an easy area to clean up and patch up if I need to. And I'm gonna be using this Royal and Langnickel Liner Brush. This is the size number one, and this is perfect for creating really long straight lines. The brush kind of does the work for you. And I'm gonna try doing the N. Oh yeah, nice. I think it's just the right thickness. Doing it over my brow hairs is gonna be a little bit complicated. And then the edges are squared off and I'm going to use a small detail brush to do that. And then there's a double outline. So there's a gap between the two lines. What was your favorite Met Gala look? Mine was honestly Ezra Miller's, but I wasn't gonna sit here and do Mimi Choi's work because she's an amazing artist and it kind of intimidates me to try to recreate her stuff. So that's why I'm going for something else. Not necessarily my all time favorite look of the night, but one of. See, this inner line is a little too thick, but it's really hard to write on your face. So it was one letter down. Many more to go. That looks kind of neat though, doesn't it? Just may have to fix up some areas with a little bit of concealer. I'll worry about that later. Now onto the O. This reminds me of my friend Sarah's look that she did where she just wrote no on her face. It's a great look. Ooh. I'm like moving my head as I move the brush as well to help draw the line where I want it. God damn it. I need to stop talking while I do this. Now I have to do a second circle inside this first one. This brush is doing pretty much all the work for me, which is great. That's pretty much it. I'm just gonna trace all the letters. The curves of your face will really distort the shapes. That's fine, you just have to adapt the shapes as you see fit. Oh, that tickles. And I'm doing these lines with my eyes open so that I can see exactly where I need to draw them. And then I can close my eyes and fill in the gaps. But what matters most is what it looks like with my eyes open. Do the little horizontal part. <gasps> See, that's why you shouldn't blink before, before something has dried. Taking water on a Q-tip to clean it up. Because my goddamn little wrinkles under my eyes. That's what it looks like to get old. I'm not even old yet. That's what's depressing. So scared about doing my nose right now. And also, this went way too high. So I have to bring this one kind of higher than I had marked, but oh well. I'm erasing some of the lines because I know I'm gonna have to change this shape up a little bit. Have you seen that meme where it's like, dress yourself every day as if you were gonna die that day and those were gonna be your ghost clothes forever? Imagine if I like died right now and this was my ghost makeup forever. Not even the finished makeup, just like mid-process. It would make haunting people easier though. It's a weird ass O. Really make sure it's dry before you open your eyelids. Looking pretty nifty. That's frustrating. See, that's feathering a lot. God damn it. I'm gonna not even breathe so that this doesn't freaking feather around my eyes. Ugh, I look away for one second. I swear to God. That's two rows done. One more to go. This isn't going too bad. It's not taking me a super long time to do this. I think it's taken like an hour so far almost an hour it's not too bad 
this bottom half of my face doesn't have as many curves, so it's going a lot faster and a lot easier than the middle row, obviously. And the O's are really hard because you have to do a curve. It's much easier to do just straight lines. Although I'm probably going to eat my words when I get to the A. <sighs> this is stressful. Mm. Trying to do it in a way that I can talk without messing it up. I'm also being careful when I talk. <gasps> That's the A done. It feathers and bleeds when there's too much water in the paint. So you have to be careful with the amount of water that you mix into it. Finally, the last one. Now that that's finally done, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the eyes and then the look will be done. I said that I was going to fix up the lines, but... I don't really feel like it, but I'm not too bothered. I think it looks fine the way it is. I always tend to be a perfectionist and that's why I spend hours and hours on end doing these looks. I think this gets the point across and you know, it's fine if there's a few imperfections here and there. I'll probably do a little bit of tweaking in Photoshop for the final image, but that's about it. You guys can see the real thing in video. I think the lines look clean enough. Now for my waterline, she definitely used a light color in there. I don't know if she used white or not, but I'm not going to use pure white. I'm going to use an off-white color that's a little bit green, and this is the NYX Faux Whites Honeydew. It's almost white, but it's not quite. Yeah, <laughs> that rhymed. This is a little bit green, and I think this is just going to add a little touch of green and continue that green eye, and it's going to be a little less harsh than the white but still give the same effect. For the lashes, she used Lashify lashes, and I dream of the day that I get to use those. Those are a really expensive system that all the celebrity makeup artists are using right now. The end result is beautiful and really hidden. You can't see a lash band because these lashes go under the natural lash, and they're not strip lashes. They're kind of little tufts that you apply individually, and you customize the lashes that way, and they just look gorgeous, so one day. One day I'll get to use them, but today is not the day. So, I'm going to be using top and bottom lashes, and both the styles that I picked have a thicker concentration on the ends. So these are the top ones. These are the Eyelore and Jordan Woods LA Baby lashes. And then the bottom ones are some cheap ones from Daiso. They were $1.50, and it's these ones right here, and you can see they have a bigger concentration there as well on the outer ends. And her falsies seem to have a lot of mascara on them. I typically don't apply mascara to my falsies, but today I'm going to be applying mascara to my falsies. So I'm going to apply my false lashes first and then do mascara after. Now I have bottom and top lashes on. I think she also had a little bit of eyeliner as well, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want it to detract from the letters. I think it would just be adding more lines to my face and it would kind of get a little confused if that makes sense. So instead I just did a little bit of tight lining in the corners to help blend that eyelash into my natural lash line. And there's something poking me in the eye and I want to die. And now for mascara, I'm going to go in with the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara because her look is very mascara-y and this has fibers in it and I feel like I can do a lot of layers and build it up to get that look. So I'm just going to go in. I think my lashes are quite a lot longer than hers were, but as I said, this is camp. We are here to exaggerate. Haley was wearing circle lenses that day, and I was going to put on some bright green contacts, but I actually really like it with my brown eyes. So I'm actually just going to pop on the wig and the accessories, and I'll be right back. So this is the finished look. I've got the wig. It's a lot shorter than Haley's hair, but it's the only brown wig I have. And then I've got my little bow, and I put on some fake nails that kind of match my eyeshadow. And I also grabbed a vintage camera. So I'm gonna take some pictures posing with this camera, doing like the poses that she did. So yeah, I think this look is actually really, really fun and really cute. Let me know what you guys think down below. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and oh my god, I haven't had long nails in so long. This is making me want to like talk with my hands and it's making me feel like a bad bitch because if you've had claws, you know the feeling. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to all my patrons who support me and I will see you next time. Bye!